It always pays to keep your eyes wide open when you're out and about. You never know what you might come across. There could be a long-forgotten ancient relic at the bottom of your garden or some space junk in the middle of the nearest field. Think that sounds far-fetched? Check out this video full of incredible finds and you'll become a believer. Hubert de Givenchy was a big name in the fashion world during the 1980s and 1990s. His company, Givenchy, is still a big deal in the fashion and perfume business today. Most people know about his fashion, but far fewer people know he once teamed up with Lincoln to make cars. There was a special Givenchy limited edition Lincoln Mark V at the end of the 1970s, and then a few special edition Lincoln Continental Givenchy models released in the mid-1980s. They're as rare as a hen's teeth today, but here's one that turned up in a junkyard in Denver, Colorado, USA in January 2021. We can only assume that whoever abandoned it had no idea what they were dealing with, which is a little strange given the fact that the Givenchy name is so clearly marked on it. You can see from these pictures that the car isn't in great condition, but it doesn't look like it would be beyond the help of someone with a talent for restoration. Let's hope that special someone comes along and picks it up sometime soon. In mid-2020, a meteorite fell to Earth and landed in the Algerian region of the Sahara Desert, close to Bir Ben Takul. Like many meteorites that land on our planet, it was collected and taken away by scientists for examination. The French research team, led by Jean-Alex Barat, quickly realized that there was something special about this one. The meteorite, named Erg Chech 002, is older than the Earth itself. In fact, it's older than our whole solar system. Unbelievably, this tiny chunk of space rock is 4.6 billion years old. Barat believes that the meteorite, which is made from magma, is a piece of a protoplanet that once orbited our sun. The protoplanet would either have been destroyed as larger astronomical bodies formed or been absorbed by other planets. In some ways, you could consider it to be a tiny fragment of Earth's older cousin. The magma that formed this rock must have reached an incredible temperature of 228 degrees Fahrenheit or more and would have taken almost 1 million years to cool down. It's been on an extraordinary journey to get to us, and now it sits in a prideful place in Jean Alexa's lab. Here's another incredible meteorite story. In February 2020, the people of Gloucestershire, England, turned their faces to the sky as a fireball streaked across it. There was a brief scramble as scientists rushed to locate the position of the rock that fell to Earth, a job that turned out to be quite tricky because most of the meteorite burned up on approach. By the time it was finally found in the town of Winchcombe, there was almost nothing left of it. Only 10 ounces of rock could be recovered but it's a very exciting 10 ounces. The stone is a carbonaceous chondrite. Inside it, scientists have found amino acids. As any expert will tell you, amino acids are the very building blocks of life from which proteins are made. Meteorite discoveries like this one are very rare. It's probably around 4 billion years old and might have much to tell us about how our solar system began and perhaps even how life began on Earth. It's been 30 years since a carbonaceous chondrite meteorite fell in the UK, so the country's scientists don't get opportunities like this very often. Their findings should be available soon. Meteorites aren't the only things that drop out of space and land on our planet. We've fired hundreds of objects into space since the 1950s, and not all of them stay there. In February 2021, this strange spherical metal object was found on the beaches of Harbor Island in the Bahamas. The artifact is covered in Russian writing. Because of that, and also because of its size, shape, weight, and design, scientists think it might be part of a Russian spacecraft. To be more specific, they think it's a hydrazine propellant tank. If that's the case, it would have been used in a rocket, probably one that was used to launch an unmanned satellite. It hasn't even been in space for particularly long, the tech suggests it was manufactured in 2018. 
Where possible, scientists that launch space rockets do their best to make sure that the discarded pieces fall into the oceans when they come back down again. That was probably the case with this tank, which would have then traveled across the sea to end up washed up on the beach. In a strange twist to the tale, British musician Dave Stewart of Eurythmics came to the scene to take a closer look at it while it was being dug up. Homeowner John Sims of Tucson, Arizona got a strange phone call one day that prompted him to dig up his entire backyard. The call came from the previous owner of his home, who thought that John might want to know that his recently acquired property comes with a whole Cold War fallout shelter. John did what almost anyone would do. He went out to his lawn with a shovel and started digging. The rumor turned out to be true. Hiding under the grass was a full-sized shelter built in 1961 by the Whitaker Pools Company. The first thing he found was the hatch, and below that, a staircase. Although sadly, the staircase has crumbled somewhat since the shelter was buried, which made accessing it a little dangerous. John climbed down anyway and found a vast concrete shelter with a domed fiberglass ceiling. The Cold War was a worrying time for all Americans, but especially so for residents of Tucson. The city played host to 18 intercontinental ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads. So if the Cold War ever turned hot, the city would have been a key target for the Soviet Union. Any equipment or furniture that might once have been down here has been removed, but John intends to fully restore it and make use of his extra piece of real estate. The Columbia Space Shuttle disaster was a tragic episode in NASA's history. It happened in 2003 and led to major changes in the way that NASA runs missions and puts spaceships together. Eight years after the disaster, a poignant discovery was made in Texas. As the Lake Nacogdoches area was subjected to an extended period of drought in August 2011, the lake's waters receded and revealed the space shuttle's aluminum power reactant storage and distribution tank. Had the drought not occurred, the remnant of the disaster would probably have never been found. The tank was full of mud when it was found, which suggests that it's probably been in the lake ever since the spacecraft exploded. It's one of 18 tanks that would have been attached to the shuttle at the time. NASA has space within the Kennedy Space Center in Florida where all of the collected debris from the Challenger disaster is stored, and this long-lost tank is now part of that collection. Just under half of the wreck of the Columbia orbiter has been recovered. The remainder is either still lost or was destroyed when the ship burned up during re-entry. The Columbia incident was only the second disaster in the 30-year history of the space shuttle program. As the shuttle program is now ended, there will never be another. In 1909, a painting called The Last Supper was gifted to a church in Ledbury, England. It isn't the Leonardo da Vinci painting of the same name, nor was it believed to have any real value at all beyond being a religious image. So it hung in the church for more than 100 years until art historian Ronald Moore discovered that it's actually connected to a different Renaissance master. During restoration work, Moore discovered the signature of Titian on the canvas. He's since compared the piece to other works by Titian, and he's convinced that it's the real deal. Titian is viewed as the greatest painter of the Venetian school and is one of the most important painters in Italian history. The artist's signature is invisible to the naked eye, but can be seen on a jug toward the painting's bottom left when ultraviolet light is used. The painting was finished in 1576, the same year that Titian passed away, and Moore thinks that his son might have helped his ailing father to finish the work. The painting has stayed with the church, but it's now subject to a little more security than it used to be. We don't know enough about the creatures that live under the sea as we should. Because of that, we sometimes struggle to identify them when they're washed up on the beach. This March 2021 discovery ruffled a lot of feathers when it was found by beachcombers in Queensland, Australia. It's a fierce-looking beast with perfectly white teeth and bulging eyes. The woman who found the creature took pictures of it and uploaded them to social media in the hope that someone would be able to identify it. Early guesses included a bass or a young barramundi. Eventually, a marine biologist chipped in and confirmed the identity of the beached creature. It's a stargazer, perhaps better known in Australia as a monkfish. 
It may not have ended up on the beach by accident. Stargazers are extremely venomous and often bury themselves in the sand while they wait for something edible to walk past so they can attack it. It looks like this one passed away before a suitable meal turned up. There are more than 20 species of stargazer living around the Australian coast, and you wouldn't want to accidentally tread on any of them. On November 17, 1969, a 13-year-old boy from England threw a message in a bottle overboard from the ship that was taking him to a new life in Australia. In July 2019, almost exactly 50 years later, his message was finally found by a young boy out on a fishing trip with his father on a remote Australian beach. The letter was written by Paul Gilmore, who said at the time of the writing, he was 1,000 miles east of Fremantle aboard a vessel called the TSS Fairstar. Paul gave an address in Victoria and asked the letter's finder to write him. Nine-year-old Jaya Elliott, who found the letter, would love to reply to Paul, but 50 years later, Paul no longer lives at the Victoria address. He would have been 63 years old at the time his letter was found, so statistically he should still be alive. If he is, Jaya hasn't been able to find him and reply to his letter. Maybe Paul is still out there somewhere. Perhaps he's even watching this video now. If he is, he should drop Jaya a line. He'd love to hear from you. High-flying lawyer David J. Whitcomb owns a law office in New York City, and in December 2020, he decided the time was right for his company to move to new offices. Two months later, he finally got around to climbing into the building's attic. And that's where he found an incredible treasure trove of old photographs, picture frames, cameras, and undeveloped negatives. It was immediately obvious that some of the equipment and photos were very old, so he contacted a photography expert. The expert couldn't believe what he was looking at. The collection is more than a century old and includes a striking picture of suffragette leader Susan B. Anthony from 1906, just one year before she passed away. Suffragettes appear to be the theme of the collection, as images of Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Elizabeth Smith Miller have been found among them too. It's highly likely that the whole collection belongs to James Hale, a noted photographer of his era, but nobody has any idea how they came to be forgotten in this attic all these years later. David has since donated them to a museum. Speaking of startling finds made in attics, here's a 17th century map of Australia that turned up hiding in the dark in a room above a house in November 2017. The map is so old that Australia isn't even called Australia. Back then it was known as Nova Hollandia, which translates as New Holland. It turns out that the map, which isn't especially accurate, was created by Dutch cartographer Jean Blau in 1659. It was based on the records of a sailor who'd rounded Tasmania a few years previously, which explained why only part of the continent is illustrated on the map. The precise details of its discovery are a little hazy, but it's thought that it was within the archives of a small antique bookseller in Sweden when their store went out of business during the 1950s. The remaining collection of old books and maps was passed down within the business owner's family, but wasn't thoroughly examined until 2017. Australia's National Library was interested in the map the moment it heard about its existence and eventually paid an incredible $450,000 to secure it. In March 2021, a team of workers from the Western Power Distribution Company in Wales made an incredible discovery while trying to move an electrical pole close to the town of Tintern in Monmouthshire. As they excavated the pole in the trench beneath it, they broke into a medieval tunnel system. These tunnels don't appear on any maps of the area and none of the town's residents had any idea they were there. Historic maps of the area don't go back any farther than the 18th century, so all historians have been able to conclude so far is that they're older than that. And even by that time, they'd been forgotten by the people of Tentern. That raises the possibility that they have a connection to the nearby Tentern Abbey, which was built during the 12th century. All digging work in the area has stopped to give archaeologists an opportunity to fully excavate and survey the site. They've already warned that the process might take years, 
The tunnels are only four feet high, which would have been a claustrophobic experience for anyone using them. Hopefully, we'll one day know who these people were. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.